Hey everyone, today I'm going to be making a fire tornado to show you how an atmospheric vortex engine works. The interesting thing about fire is that it always goes up. And the reason it goes up is because it heats up the air and the air becomes less dense and that less dense air then rises and the cooler air falls down around it. Now normally when fire is just regularly burning, the hot air is mixing with the cold air and so there's not an efficient rise of the hot air. It's kind of all getting mixed together and jumbled together. The hot air doesn't just have a column, it can go up. It's kind of like in this setup when you have two two liter bottles, one that has water on top and air on the bottom, and you let the air go to the top, if it just bubbles to the top, it doesn't flow very efficiently. The water doesn't flow to the bottom very well. But if you create a vortex in the water, then it creates an efficient system because the water stays to the outside because it's more dense, but the less dense air can just go straight up to the middle. And so basically it creates this tunnel so the air can go to the top, the water can come to the bottom. So a vortex is a really efficient method for less dense things to rise and heavier things to fall. Now what that means for the fire is that if you can create a vortex for fire, it will make it so the hot air can rise more easily and the cold air can come down around it. And that means that it'll bring in more oxygen too to the fire and feed it. So overall, it will be able to burn the fire better and that hot air will get out of the way faster. Now one way to create this vortex is just to stick a fire in a spinning trash can and that will create the air moving around it and it will create a fire vortex or a fire tornado. And it's really awesome to look at. And I recommend not trying this one at home. So this is how big it is without spinning it. Now watch what happens when I spin it. So you can see that as I spin the fire, it starts the air moving. Now the reason it forms a vortex is kind of like the water air setup that I showed earlier. In this case, the hotter air is less dense so it moves towards the center and the colder air is more dense so it moves towards the outside. So the centrifugal force pulls the cold air to the outside and the warm air towards the center. And that creates this nice column for the warm air to rise and it also brings in fresh oxygen below and feeds the fire even more. So you can create this really tall column of fire just by spinning it a little bit. It's really amazing. Now to get this really looking cool, you can add some chemicals to it like borax to make green fire. So here's a green fire tornado. Whoa. Now usually when we use fire in an industrial setting, we're using that fire to heat up gas and that gas either pushes a piston or turns a turbine. So the expanding gas pushes something and does work. And usually that hot gas is just vented to the atmosphere. Now what's interesting is after it's vented to the atmosphere, it's still hot and so it rises. But we usually don't care about that because we just let it be waste heat into the atmosphere. But there's a researcher named Louis McCod and he proposed that instead of just wasting that buoyant energy that just floats the hot air up into the atmosphere, what if we were actually to use that to turn some turbines somehow? 
But the problem is you can't just have stacks of turbines that turn and get that energy back as the hot air floats up into the top of the sky. But a better way to do it is to create what's called an atmospheric vortex engine. And basically what it does is just to create this man-made tornado that uses waste heat from power plants. And so it forms the tornado just depending on how the hot air is coming into this channel. And it funnels it up so it creates a vortex up. And the incoming air runs through small turbines that can capture some of that energy. Now it's not yet proven how much energy you could collect from that. Unless you have a huge plume of hot air going up, you couldn't collect a lot of energy from that. But besides collecting energy from this, another interesting thing that you can do, you notice how high the fire went up from the bottom of where it was burning, just by spinning it. So what you can do is you can create these virtual chimneys for the fire or hot air to escape to the higher atmosphere. So usually these power plants will have to create really expensive chimneys to make sure that the hot air gets high enough above the ground to easily flow to the upper atmosphere. But in this case, if you create enough of a vortex, it will channel itself up. It will create this nice virtual chimney made out of air just by the centrifugal force, just to let that hot air flow up by itself. Now the inventor for this has high hopes. One question is, do crosswinds affect it? You can see that when I'm blowing on it, it kind of blows the fire over pretty easily, but it does recover as soon as I stop. So the centrifugal force is still there of the spinning air, so it recovers really easily. So probably on a large scale, that same thing would happen. It wouldn't just disrupt the vortex altogether, unless it were a really strong cro crosswind coming through. Now people have been researching this for as long as 20 years and it doesn't look like there's been a lot of progress in this, but it does have some potential which is quite interesting. What's interesting about it to me is that usually we're focused on heat, being able to use the heat right away, and then we dispose of this waste heat. But what's interesting is we've created this now less dense gas that can still be used because we can float it up into the atmosphere and potentially still use it. The question from there is just, can we get enough energy back from that to make it worth our while to even try to recover it? Now, fire tornadoes can start on their own. These happen in wildfires a lot. Basically, the fires create this microclimate, and if you can get walls of hot air and cold air to move by each other, they'll naturally form these vortexes, and once they start, they're hard to stop. Now, in the wild, these things are terrifying. They're basically a tornado made out of fire. And thanks for watching another episode of the Action Lab. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't yet and hit the bell so you can be notified when my latest video comes out. And thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.